with a 75 basis point increase in the Fed funds rate. Joining me right now is former OMB director and Center for Renewing America president, Russ Vaught. Uh, Russ, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. What do you make of the Fed's you move bet. and opening the door for perhaps another 75 basis point hike in July? Yeah, I think they're starting to get it. I mean, I think the, the problem that the Fed has had, that Jay Powell has had, is that no one believes that he's actually an inflation hawk. And this is the uh, opportunity they took yesterday to change expectations. I think that's their number one credibility problem, not the fact that they changed from their previous guidance. And my hope is that they would have gone a little bit higher, and I would hope that they would go uh, 100 basis points next month and, and really continue to increase this until we have dealt with inflation as it needs to be dealt with to get this economy in a better position for the American people. Well, Ross, that's a real slamming on the brakes, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about 50 basis points last time, 75 basis points this month, uh, one full point in the next move. Is that going to send us into recession? Yeah, I think it's, we're going to have a very hard time with the soft landing right now, and I think that's, I'm a little concerned the extent to which they are they're working so hard to achieve that. And, I, you know, I want this economy to grow as much as possible, but people are hurting back home, and we, we need aggressive action. And so I, I, my view is that as soon as the Fed can take dramatic steps to deal with this, it will put us in a position where we can actually get the fundamentals right and start to grow. And I think the Biden administration is a huge part to play in this in their their anti-energy, their their regulatory strategy. So there's a lot there. And you're right, in your last segment, they have not wanted to stop spending. If they were given trillions of dollars today to sign into law, they would do it and, and inflation uh, uh, not be a concern on their mind. So there's a lot of yeah. moving parts, but I believe the Fed continues needs to take strong action. Well, yeah, they, they, they want more spending. Uh, Chuck Schumer is pushing it. He wants to take an opportunity to use this reconciliation opportunity uh, in October. So that's why he's still trying to get spending through. And, it, and by the way, that includes one and a half trillion dollars of new taxes. So on top of all the inflation, on top of the higher borrowing costs, throw on their higher taxes if the Democrats have their way. No, no doubt about it. Again, they they have not pivoted from an economic policy that is, yeah. is generating much of the situation that we're looking at. And so, you know, we're going to be in a world of hurt until the cavalry comes. Russ, let me get your take on foreign policy. Your latest op ed at FoxNews.com argues against Finland and Sweden joining NATO. You write it is not in the national interest of the United States to commit to defend two wealthy European welfare states whose neutrality has kept them safe and prosperous for more than 70 years. Tell me more, and do you think this is happening? Yeah, I am very concerned about it. I mean, 70% of the countries in NATO are not paying their 2% of what's required of them. And the minute these countries come into NATO, they all of a sudden think of it's a reclining chair and what they need to do. And these are very prosperous countries that are not yet, uh, Finland's pretty close, but they are not yet doing their 2%. And I don't want the United States to have to then bear the cost of our taxpayers' dollars. We're at 3.5%, and we need to go higher in places to be able to prepare for China. And that's yeah. my real concern. And I, also, I don't want to double the border with Russia of NATO countries, the 800 miles, and, and have further provocations at a time where yeah. Putin has shown that he's not the regional power that would be able to go straight across Europe that NATO was, was positioned in favor of. So I don't think this is a problem that needs the solution of Finland and Sweden being brought in. Well, I think this is a good point. And then, of course, there's also the potential retaliation from Vladimir Putin. But you're talking about cost. What is the cost of the highest number of migrant encounters in history last month? I mean, Border Protection and Customs officials are reporting that you've got more than 239,000 people apprehended. That does not include the gotaways. Uh, the border states uh, are, are under massive pressure. What should they be doing? You say they should declare an invasion? I do. Uh, part of the concern is that the Biden administration is not going to do that and do anything. And we know it. They're the problem. And so we have two years left or more of Biden administration. And so we got to have the governors declare an invasion under Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, 
get them outside of federal immigration law, put them under the Constitution, and allow them to use the self-help provisions that are there that the founders gave them to be able to protect their citizens. And all that would look like, Maria, is they interdict, they have their sheriffs, their state troopers, their national guardsmen, they would interdict and remove them to the border, and it would work very similar to how Title 42 has worked, but we believe that this would change the flow overnight, and it's incumbent upon those governors. We think the people more likely to do it would be Governor Abbott and Governor Ducey. So far, they have yeah. been reluctant to do it, but the Attorney General in Arizona believes, like we do, in this legal foundation for them to act. What do you think the cost of all of these new people coming into the country is? Oh, it's exorbitant. I mean, all of these individuals are, are putting severe drain on local communities, not just about the border, but they're, they're transferring it. When you come across the border, you're going to San Antonio, you're now getting on a flight for this, this developed network of, of nonprofits to get you throughout the country. So schools that we're paying for, uh, higher education we're paying for, refugee costs we're paying for, it's through the roof. And we don't have that money in this country anymore. We have to get a control of this. Jails are filling up. Up across Texas, not just by the border, because of the, the 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 flow, it's a huge problem, Maria. Yeah, Russ, I think you make a great point. Uh, we're going to be watching the cost on this country, as all of the other costs we watch are are soaring. Thanks very much, Russ Vote, for joining us this morning. We so appreciate it.